So Massachusetts, Ohio. So, yeah, I started my undergrad there and, and I had, uh, it was in a really small um, department with some incredible professors and they really kind of taught me the, the structure of music and academia mm -hmm. um, and knowing what my, my personal finances, my family background, that kind of thing was, they're like, you're a soprano. So if you want an assistantship, you're going to need to have something, some skills other than just singing. Um, and they were 1000% correct. I was foolishly pursuing a, a vocal performance composition. And then they kind of said, you know, you could just add on musicology for an extra three classes. And I was like, oh, okay. So I ended up with kind of a triple concentration. Um, but the musicology degree was what got me assistantship opportunities so that I didn't have to pay for grad school. Don't do it, people. Um, That's but awesome. I had another wonderful experience. That's what brought me out to Ohio. And I started coaching with some folks outside of the uh, Youngstown State University there and um, working for some local companies, big and small. And that's how I met John Simmons, which is how I ended up at um, Cleveland Institute of Music coaching, where I got to work a lot with Linda Jones. And um, that was a great opportunity. And then that's where I met my husband. That's awesome. Um, and we we pioneered our way to California from there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. I, I grew up on the East Coast as well, more more in, in the Hartford area and then upstate mm -hmm. New York. Well, you're um, only 15 minutes south of me. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and then, so you, you got your, your AD in, in Cleveland, uh, and then I think you said you mentioned you were sort of managing dental clinics for 10 years or so. Yeah. So when I was in Cleveland and I was getting ready to, um, graduate from my artist diploma, it was a good location for me at the time because really it was like, without snow, it was like a, a seven and a half hour drive into New York. Um, and I had family another two hours North. So I, I. I think on like a monthly basis, if not biweekly basis, I was driving um, back and forth, putting a ton of miles on my old car. Sure. Um, but it was it was good location at the time. Cost of living was low. I had some good mentors. Um, when I, I left, it happened when I left CIM, it happened to be right in this little pocket that Jane Eaglin was at Baldwin Wallace. And so she was really the first voice teacher that I ever went out and pursued on my own outside of uh university and that was a a great period of growth for me kind of having permission to not do things for the sake of a, a degree um so it was a a good kind of hub for a while um i'm sorry i don't even remember how we got onto that topic so yes i'll, I'll ask you about oh, dental yeah. clinics yeah yeah oh yeah. sorry and so you know but i had to pay the bill still um and ohio employment laws are quite different and there was a a dentist who used to be a classical bass player. Oh, wow. And I met him through a, a friend of mine at school. And he said, you know, I'm starting a dental practice. Um, I'm not quite a millionaire yet. You know, I need to hire somebody who I can afford, um, but I can, you know, pay to train you and all that stuff. And he said, I really want to hire a soprano because they can memorize quickly. They're always smiling, even if people are mad at them. And I was like, well, okay, cool. So it was, I mean, I, I didn't realize what a gift that was at the time. Um, you know, it was just a decent paying job and I, I could work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then have these long weekends for rehearsals and stuff like that. Um, but man, learning those dental codes, it was so easy to um, move around the country. I think no matter where we ended up, we were looking at New York and New Jersey for a while for jobs for my husband. And no matter where I was, it was something I could have four job offers in the same day because most wow. people in that um, position of office management and uh, dental insurance, like most of them come up through the dental world. It's not something that people want to do. So they were like, oh, you have multiple degrees. Yes, let's let's do this. Awesome. <laughs> so I got a lot of job offers and it certainly paid the bills and made um, it much easier to be flexible for the most part because I could leave the job at the job, come home, sing, do music and um kind of lead my my Clark Kent Superman life that way for about 12 years. So yeah. 12 years. Yeah, yeah there there's some great things about that that 9 to 5 life. A parallel career is especially talking about the tenors and the uh millions of sopranos and and the dramatic voices out there like we just need time mm -hmm. to percolate and to fit into our voice and 
you know, we're certainly not well off, but if you can have some financial security and do it comfortably, then by the time your voice is ready, you know, most, there's probably a lot more talented people out there, but they just stop pursuing the career because life gets in the way. Um, yeah. Especially these larger voices, you hear about how rare they are, but I don't know that they're that rare so much as it it takes a long game and being able to be satisfied knowing that your time isn't coming for a while. Um, it's a bowl so of You got to cook for eight hours. It's not, you know, ragu pasta sauce you can I throw like, in the microwave. I like that. Yeah. Right. We're not canned pasta people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>